Can the world ever forgive the scientist for his involvement in the atomic bomb? Is the question presented by J. Robert Oppenheimer's wife Kitty and Oppenheimer, which leaves the viewers wondering. Oppenheimer, a film written and directed by Christopher Nolan, follows the titular character through the years, detailing his work on the atomic bomb that the United States government dropped over Hiroshima and Nagasaki as well as the Lewis Strauss hearing that resulted in Oppenheimer losing his security clearance. Oppenheimer ends its narrative by telling what Oppenheimer and Albert Einstein discussed. The movie picks up right after Oppenheimer's hearing resulted in the revocation of his security clearance and the Senate rejected Strauss' nomination for Secretary of Commerce. When the world has finished punishing Oppenheimer, says Einstein, they will award medals and grant forgiveness for his work on the atomic bomb, but this will be for them and not for Oppenheimer. Then Oppenheimer discloses that the calculations that would destroy the world actually occurred, which shocks Einstein sufficiently for him to leave. Oppenheimer imagines himself witnessing the world's devastation brought on by nuclear war, explaining Strauss and Oppenheimer's parallel hearings. Oppenheimer was the target of a personal vendetta held by Louis Strauss, which he never forgot. Strauss made the decision to act on his own when Oppenheimer insulted his response to a hearing on radioisotopes and ignored and publicly humiliated him. Since Oppenheimer continued to have a say in government decisions on nuclear weapons, Strauss didn't want to lead the Atomic Energy Commission, especially given their resistance to their hazards. Since Nolan compared Strauss and Oppenheimer's hearings, a push-pull dynamic was formed that reflected their opposing points of view and provided the audience with two arguments. Strauss' actions were mostly motivated by petty issues. Despite the fact that Strauss destroyed Oppenheimer's career, he was eventually unable to get his own place in the cabinet due to the resistance he faced from other scientists and a significant portion of the Democratic Party, including John F. Kennedy, who later worked to repair Oppenheimer's image. The concurrent hearings also revealed Oppenheimer's shift in opinion on nuclear weapons and their use against civilian targets and political disputes. In the end, Oppenheimer had a change of heart and pushed for nuclear disarmament while opposing the creation of the hydrogen bomb. He didn't regret being a part of the atomic bomb's creation, though. Oppenheimer carried out the task he was given to do, although he believed it to be wicked and frequently advocated against the deployment of a super bomb. Oppenheimer made his shift to this. In order to be pardoned for his prior ties to the Communist Party and his involvement in the development of the atomic bomb, Oppenheimer allowed himself to fall. Kitty frequently urged him to fight back, but he never did. He also did this in an effort to keep his security clearance. The final conversation between Oppenheimer and Einstein, their last exchange in the movie, which takes place in 1947, is indicative of how Oppenheimer and Einstein's lives unfolded similarly. During his talk with Einstein, Oppenheimer acknowledged that he had sparked a domino effect in the weapons race. Oppenheimer had no control over anything considerably more hazardous that resulted from the development of the atomic weapon. Einstein acknowledges that he had lost the ability to comprehend what he had begun. His remark makes reference to the fact that quantum mechanics, which ultimately helped to lead to the development of the atomic bomb, was made possible by Einstein's theory of relativity. When the world feels as though it has sufficiently punished Oppenheimer, according to Einstein, it will award him a medal. But this will serve more to allay the guilt of those who wronged him, like Edward Teller from Benny Safdie's film, The Security Hearings, who turned against Oppenheimer. The differences between the two scientists are mostly due to their distinct career stages and the destructive nature of their work. Once it started, Oppenheimer and Einstein were powerless to stop it, they could only watch as it spiraled. What Oppenheimer's final shot in destruction of Earth means. Oppenheimer's last image depicts the annihilation of Earth due to nuclear conflict. Oppenheimer envisions the disaster unleashed by the development of the atomic weapon and how much worse it may be. Oppenheimer also observes rains on the pond in the film's concluding image, mirroring the opening scene. The atoms are like the tiny but potent raindrops, it's almost as if he can glimpse the quantum realm. Nuclear explosions are really just the quantum universe blown up in size. Oppenheimer brought about the worldwide nightmare he had feared as a young man. The atomic bomb was just the beginning. What transpired with Oppenheimer following the film's events? Oppenheimer withdrew from the public spotlight when his security clearance was terminated. He relocated to St. John and the Virgin Islands with his family. He persisted in giving talks and became more outspoken on the applications of scientific discoveries and the danger they posed to humanity. The World Academy of Art and Science was founded by Oppenheimer, Einstein, and other scientists. In 1947, he became the head of Princeton's Institute for Advanced Study. The physicist eventually published a book that contained his lectures and other writings on his worries over the application of science in politics. He didn't publicly oppose nuclear weapons, though, like some of his colleagues, perhaps as a result of the security hearing. Oppenheimer never ceased talking about science at this time, and even though he was still disregarded and denied any political influence, he eventually received the Enrico Fermi Award in 1963 for his contributions to World War II. Oppenheimer was diagnosed with throat cancer shortly after, in 1965, and passed away in February 1967. 
his legacy endured, but his ability to influence others was severely diminished while he was still alive, and this negatively impacted the rest of his days. The real meaning, could Oppenheimer be forgiven? Despite doing what was required of him, J. Robert Oppenheimer, known as the father of the atomic bomb, lost everything as a result of the security hearing because his friends had betrayed him. He had been called a traitor, and his connection with Gene Tatlock had been brought up. His image was tarnished, he was publicly humiliated, and he never recovered. Despite his achievements and his willingness to go through the hearings unopposed, Kitty contends that the world would never forgive him for the atomic weapon. Oppenheimer would later oppose nuclear programs in the creation of the hydrogen bomb, but President Truman downplays his worries. Damage had already done. Oppenheimer doesn't take a position on the issue in his conclusion. The character of Oppenheimer in Christopher Nolan's film is self-aware and focuses more on an assessment of a guy with enormous ambition who gave in to political pressure, but wasn't perfect himself. Though it is told from Oppenheimer's perspective, the movie doesn't immediately call him a great man. Rather, Oppenheimer's feelings are a mixture of wonder and regret. Is Oppenheimer pardonable? The fact that the Department of Energy issued a statement in 2022 revoking the 1954 decision to withdraw Oppenheimer's security clearance implies that the American government has forgotten about Oppenheimer. Has the world, though, depending on whom one asks, perhaps. The atomic bomb's aftereffects, including the subsequent development of nuclear weapons and the 200,000 fatalities it inflicted in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, are still being felt today. Even though Oppenheimer subsequently supported nuclear disarmament, his legacy is more of a warning. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.